What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Succession Companion Podcast presented by The Disorderly. Head over to thedisorderly.com for the best in sports and entertainment. This week, we're getting into Season 1, Episode 7, entitled Austerlitz, which is the name of uh, Connor's ranch that they they do the family therapy on. Uh, This was an important episode for me because I I reached a new milestone in my love for this show. No Greg. There was no Greg in the entire episode, like at all. Zero Greg in the whole episode. And yet, I still really enjoyed it. That's a threshold I thought we would never cross for a while. It was the only part of the show that I was enjoying. And uh, sure enough, we, we did a greg episode and I had a good time watching it. So that's a huge milestone for the show, for me as a fan, uh, for anyone who agreed with that sentiment that Greg was basically the only good part of the show. It's been disproven because the show did not have him in it, this episode, and it was fantastic. Uh, there's also there, there's solid running jokes. There was the, you know, the joke about Connor molesting Roman when he was a young child. So that was funny. I know it doesn't sound funny, but if you watch the episode, you understand in context. Uh, but the rest was a fairly serious episode, and it was still good. I enjoyed it, and I feel like that's that's an important um, you know distinction because this is clearly not just a comedy. You want the drama, you want the the dramatic family dynamics and all this stuff. And, and I, I wasn't really fully sure that they are capable of carrying that load. And it seems like in this episode, they've proven that they are. So. Good news. Good news for Secession. Good news for HBO. Good news for, for all involved. Good news for me who has to, you know, I made a commitment to watching this whole season. If it sucked, I would, I'd be stuck. So luckily, you know, I enjoy the actual part of watching it and, and doing this podcast as well. So aside from that, this was a tough episode to watch for me just personally because I really struggle with watching, you know, an addict spiral out of control. And we obviously got that with Kendall in this episode. This is actually the first time we saw that too because we, we heard that he was an addict. We never actually saw it. All his addiction, all his spiraling out and, and you know past troubles, that all took place before the first episode. So it was alluded to, but we never actually got to see you know Kendall acting like an addict. So we, we saw that for the first time today. And I don't know, man, it's just, t- it's just tough to watch someone like fall off the wagon. It's just not, I don't know, it just bothers me, I guess. It's just, it's just a, a tough thing to watch. You're like, just like, come on, man, just don't do it. Like when he's about to take the first drink, I mean, he's about to take his first hit of meth or whatever. It's like... Uh, just sucks. So it's actually they they did it in kind of a humorous way. There's funny parts, uh, especially with a lot of the conversations he was having with with Roman and then with the other drug addicts before that. It was funny. So they did it in a comedic way, but it's still I don't know. It just sucks. Um, but hey, what what are you gonna do? It was an important turn for the character himself because th- this whole thing, the, this is basically stemming from the moment that he got pushed out of the company. You know that he he failed at his. His overthrow of his father that he orchestrated, the whole thing fell apart. He failed. He got kicked out of the company. He, he basically was wandering around the streets of New York, just incoherent, apparently. And he's been off the grid. And, and that's obviously the straw that kind of pushed him towards this. But it goes beyond that as well. Because beyond that, I think, I think you know, the, the big thing that kind of sent him over the edge was the phone call with his wife. Because even though they're not together, you know, it's his ex-wife, it, it seems like she's really his lifeline him uh uh, sorry his wife and and you know their kids together and it seems like that's what's keeping him on the straight and narrow so she basically questions whether you know he's lying to her whether you know the stories are true that that he is a drug addict and i think when she doesn't believe him i think that's what really sends him over the edge i think you know he says well fuck it everyone thinks i'm on drugs anyway so i might as well do some drugs i really think that was where his brain was and that's what he was thinking and that's really the tragic part of this is that because these stories came out that he was on drugs, that pushed him into actually being on drugs again. Even though the original stories were untrue, he was completely sober. He's obviously distraught and you know extremely emotionally distressed, but he was sober when all this is happening. And and then you know this this sort of flips into him actually. It's like a self fulfilling prophecy. And it just sucks. It sucks to see that's what what sends him off. And then obviously later in the episode we find out that the stories that were going around about him being on drugs and and that being the explanation for all of this, the, whether it be the overthrow or him running around the streets in New York, the, the, these stories came out because Logan, his father, planted them, which is awful. So his father basically drove him back into drug abuse. Now you can't really blame. At the end of the day, the the blame is on Kendall himself. But it's a combination of his wife not trusting him, um, you know, his his father actually planting the stories, which he didn't know about. But you know, just the rejection from his father, which seems like he, he's so desperate for his father's approval, that that rejection really, really cut him deep. And then just a bunch of things came together and really sent Kendall spiraling out in this episode. And that that was, uh, yeah, like I said, tough to watch. But the episode as a whole was about Logan doing a little PR work to get the Roy's out of hot water for being a basically a disaster of a family. Uh, this is all done in an effort to clear the way for the local television station buyout because it's very politically sensitive. 
and uh, Logan's trying to push ahead with it, but he basically Stewie, who's Kendall's friend, says, "You know what? You got to clear up your image first. We got to clear up this image. We can't have the the I think he calls them a horror show of a family, which is basically what the public thinks right now. We can't have that be the news story going along while we're trying to execute this very sensitive deal of buying all these these local TV stations. It's obvious how necessary this is." Because someone hits Logan Roy with a water balloon filled with piss right at the beginning of the episode. Basically, the guy's not happy about him trying to monopolize the media. Uh, this goes back to you know whatever episode it was where Roman calls him Kim Jong Pop. You know, like it's it's clearly he he's Logan wants control. That's a, a big sort of recurring theme of this show, and the public is not happy with this billionaire basically buying out all these local independently owned TV networks. So so that's the issue. This whole therapy thing is just a PR stunt. He brought a reporter. He brought a photographer. He basically wants uh, some some positive press to come out of this so they can clear up their image. And the kids see right through it. Honestly, Roman was in the room when the plan happened, so I think he knew about it. Uh, Shiv, I don't think, fully understood what it was. Connor definitely didn't. Connor thought they're really doing this, and it was good for the family. Shiv was skeptical, but then when she saw through the bullshit, she was like, this is crazy. I'm out of here. I got other stuff to do. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um but things didn't work out as planned, obviously. I mean, you get some force, just getting everyone in the same room forced some therapy, some some tough truth, some some hard love, whatever you want to call it. I think I might reverse those. I think it's hard truths, tough love, whatever. You get what I'm saying. But the the, the family basically did have some breakthroughs, whether it was an accident or not. And uh, the, I don't know. We'll see how you know what the fallout from that is in the, the final two episodes of the season. Or three episodes? Is this episode seven? Yeah, right. Episode seven. So I think there's 10 episodes. So there should be eight, nine, ten still to come. But... But yeah, you know, it's interesting. And speaking on the Shiv stuff, because she had a big episode as well, uh, she begins her affair with Nate. That also bummed me out. Call me a romantic, but that sort of thing always bums me out. I, I'm always upset watching someone, you know, cheat. Especially the Tom has been one of my favorite characters as well. And he's just a nice guy. And he's just, you know, I think Logan says at the end of the episode that, you know, she married someone below her her uh, stature or whatever, you know, so she married down so she wouldn't, there's no threat of him hurting her. And, and that's probably true. And that's sad because... Uh, Tom is kind of a suck up. He is kind of a, he doesn't have a lot of backbone. He's kind of just goes, blows with the wind wherever it goes. And, uh, it seems like that's not enough for Shiv, not challenging enough for Shiv. Nate seems like a better match, but I just, and they have a history, I, I guess as well, but I hate to see, you know, like the, the affairs. It just bothers me. I don't know. Call me a sucker. I know it's a TV show. It just bothers me. Um, but mixed up in all this is Shiv's new job with Gil Evis, the presidential candidate that basically goes against everything the Roy family stands for. So, so far we have, we have, you know, Shiv doing this political career, and it's kind of intertwined with the plots, kind of intertwined, intertwined with the family business. We haven't really seen it in action yet. That's coming. That's what this is. This, this setup, her deciding to work for it, Gil Evis, is basically, uh, you know, her, her agreeing to go to war with her family. And she's so fed up by this bullshit therapy thing and all this other stuff. Obviously, some of the comments her dad makes at the end of the episode probably doesn't, you know, doesn't sway things one way or the other. But it seems like this is a huge setup for some big final war. You know, you're going to have all these people, this, this whole disconnected family, people that kind of at war with each other, Roman being the suck up. It seems like Roman's going to kind of be at his dad's side doing whatever his dad wants, because at the end of the day, that's who he's attracted to is the, the person with the most power and control. And right now this seems to be Logan still. Um, so it seems like that, that there's going to create some tension between Roman and Kendall and Roman and the rest of the family. And obviously Roman and Shiv now, because it's going to be, you know, the, the Roy family that's still involved in the company versus Shiv and her political candidate. That's trying to basically go head to head and, and, and undermine everything the company is trying to do. They're very at ends politically. So I think that's all very interesting. It's compelling. That's a compelling plot. I'm looking forward to seeing where, you know, this thing goes in the next three episodes, how it sets up for future seasons. Uh, I'm excited about the show now, man. I really am. And lastly, just because I don't know if it's going to come back or not, but who the hell is Carolina, right? So Connor w was clearly struck by her presence when she got off the bus. He was like, Carolina, and like frozen his tracks. Roman gave her a weird look as well when he arrived and, and kind of gave a surprised hello, you know? It's, it's, I don't know what the deal is. I know she's, so she's on the board, but it seems like there's some sort of history beyond just like a regular board member. There's some strange reason why, why both kids reacted to her being there. And, and just reacted to her in general. So I don't really know if there's more to that. I don't know. Unless I just missed something over the course of the episode. But I did watch it twice. And I didn't uh, I didn't really get any added context on the second watch either. So I don't know. Keep an eye on Carolina too, I guess. And, of course, Connor asked his prostitute to, uh, to move in with him at the ranch. And she agrees. And she does not seem happy. And it's, I don't know. That's going to be an interesting thing as well. 
so yeah, lots of open ends, lots of lots of threads to go on, lots of uh, plots and subplots and, and different tangents that they can explore. And I don't know, man, I, li- I like the show, I really do. And if you've been listening to every episode of this podcast, you know that that was not my first take. It took me a while to warm up to it, but I'm feeling good about it now. I'm, I'm looking forward to next Sunday's episode, whatever. You know, it's 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 been great. So. If you are also liking the show or you want to just hear my opinions on it or whatever, please keep tuning in every single week. The Succession Companion Podcast presented by The Disorderly. Rate, review, subscribe. Thumbs up on on YouTube if that's where you're listening. Uh, Tell a friend about this thing. Spread it around. Tell a friend about The Disorderly in general. I'm also doing a a Sharp Objects podcast. I'm doing a a weekly baseball post, different articles here and there, music reviews, things like that. So thanks again for listening. We appreciate the hell out of you guys. And I'll talk to you next week. Peace.